watching Reason and Theology Live. The show concentrates on theological topics, historical matters, and philosophical problems with content ranging from introductory material to in-depth examinations. And now, your host, Michael Lofton. Welcome to Reason and Theology, everyone. Your host, Michael, on a Wednesday evening. I have a very special guest on the line, Father John Aurelia, Order Franciscan Miners Capuchin. He is the personal secretary to St. Padre Pio, my confirmation saint. So it is an absolute honor to have him on today to discuss um, his experience with Padre Pio being his personal secretary. But first, Father, welcome to the show. And will you also introduce us with a prayer? Thank you so much. Uh, those who are listening to this dialogue, please kneel if you can, because we're going to pray the same prayer used by, the, by Padre Pio every day of his life on earth. Mm. So we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, you have said, truly I say to you, ask will be given you, seek you will find, knock will be opened to you. Behold, I knock, I seek, and I ask for the grace of. Our Father who art in heaven, allowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, I place all my trust in you. And this is the first part of the whole prayer. He would say three parts of the same prayer. And so we we may begin our sharing at this time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, thank you so much for that. And he would pray that every day. He prayed that every day. Wow. And, he, and, he, and you said he would do it three times, correct? He would do three verses. So I, did, I just did one verse. one verse. The second and the third. I skipped the second and the third because limited the time. If you want me, I can do the second and uh, third verse as well. If you wouldn't mind, just so that we can hear what Padre Pio would pray so that we would have a good example ourselves. Because I imagine there's a lot of listeners who are going to want to pray the second and third verses every day so if Very you can give those to okay. us please so keep keep kneeling down please if you can oh my jesus you have said truly i say to you if you ask anything of the father in my name he will give to you behold in your name i now ask for the grace of them. Our Father who art in heaven, allow be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, I place all my trust in you. O oh, my Jesus, you have said, truly I say to you, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Encouraged by your infallible words, I now ask for the grace of our Father who art in heaven, allowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of death. Amen. Sacred heart of Jesus, I place all my trust in you. O oh, sacred heart of Jesus, for whom it is impossible not to have compassion the afflicted, have pity on us, miserable sinners, grant us the grace which we ardently desire through your sorrowful mother and ours. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our sweetness and our hope. To do we cry for banners children we. To you do we send up our sighs in mourning and weeping this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes so mercy toward us, and after this silence, show unto us the blessed fruit of your Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Saint Joseph, foster father of Jesus, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And this is the prayer Padre Pio prayed every day of his life. Thank you. And, and thank you so much for that, Father. What a, what an honor um, to have you pray with us. And he would pray those together, or would he space them out throughout the day? I'm just curious on how how to do that. I would pray uh, usually in the morning, after the morning prayer, around uh, seven before ma- uh, after mass. The mass was around four five a a m. I'm sorry every day and after mass he would pray also this prayer wow thank you so much for that father i i know that i myself and many others are going to be praying that now yeah um, but it just as a way of explanation padre pio was very devoted to saint joseph mm-hmm. that's why he invokes saint joseph at the end of this prayer and also the the other two saints padre pio loved very much was saint francis as a Michael the Archangel, just for uh, information. I didn't. I didn't know that, it, and I've I've read a lot about him, but I, I wasn't aware of that. So thank you for that. That's that's very good to know. I, I kind of knew about Saint Francis. I did not know about um, his devotion specifically to Saint Joseph and, yeah. and Michael the Archangel. Yeah. Yes, Saint Michael the Archangel is a shrine near San Giovanni Rotondo, about five miles. Okay. Yes. Is on, on the mountain, but the, the the shrine is in the mountain. Mm-hmm. You have to go to go down into the mountain, and, and there is a, a church in the mountain. And Padre Pio went to that shrine, mm-hmm. as well as Saint Francis. Saint Francis went to that shrine as well. I, I think I recall reading about that a while back. Yeah, that's that's ringing a bell. Well, let me ask you, how, how did you first come to be the secretary or a secretary to uh, St. Padre Pio? By a lucky accident. <laughs> his, uh, his personal secretary was not available. Or in, um, they were different languages. So the superior called me up. Were, I was teaching at the minor seminary in Vico del Gargano. It's another town about 50 miles from San Giovanni Rotondo. So the superior says, would you like to be secretary of Padre Pio for the month of August? Because uh, I have nobody and uh, we have to answer a thousands upon thousands of letters every day. And I said, I will be there in a split second. So I got the job for uh, the month of August, 1967. That was my personal experience living with him in the same house. However, you know, the knowledge of Padre Pio uh, began in 1954, actually, when I entered the seminary in the same seminary built by the Padre Pio's will in Pietrelcino, Pietrelcina, where he was born. So I entered the seminary at that time, 1954, and uh, I used to go to San Giovanni Rotondo with other seminarians at least once a month to 
see Padre Pio, pray with Padre Pio, bless you, Padre Pio, confession, you know, all that good stuff. Well, I'm so tempted to ask about confession, but I'll, I'll ask about that in a moment. <laughs> I, I'm definitely curious to hear what that was like. Uh, but let, let me first ask, what, what was your first experience like with St. Pio? Uh, what, what is it like uh, when you first met him? The first time I met Padre Pio, it was like an awesome, it, uh, awesome uh, an experience which cannot have words because I, I sensed, I felt that this man is a saint. Just the way he was praying, the way he was looking at you, the way he was addressing you. Uh, you know, for me, Padre Pio was a saint since I was a, a little boy, 14 years of age because this way of doing it. So my first experience is, uh, the only word I can use is awesome. Mm. It's, um, uh, and then, you know, it grew eventually uh, because uh, very frequently we would travel to San Giovanni Rotondo and, and I would see so many people going to him. I said, no, I wonder why so many people come here. <laughs> so the, it was a beautiful experience, definitely. I, I think I read somewhere where you, when you first met him, you went to touch his hands to see if he had the stigmata, and he pulled away. Is that right? Who told you that? <laughs> I, I, I read, read it. This. <laughs> yes. Yes, you know, you know, everybody was saying he has the stigmata. Yeah. But at that time, I never saw the stigmata because during the day he had half gloves so you could not see the stigmata uh, only during the mass but i didn't uh, i didn't go to mass at that time yet so i didn't see the stigmata so to find out you know as a, as a bad boy would do he squeezed the hand right in the middle and he said me fa male he said it hurts you know, it's, uh, he really gave to me. Uh, it was not really <laughs> friendly. I think it hurts very much because, you know, when I think about now, it's it's an open wound, right. and you right. squeeze the open wound, you know. So, <laughs> you know, it was not, uh, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, it was uh, one of my first experiences. You, you're right. I mean, yes. but, but he forgave you. <laughs> Uh, well, I went to confess. He gave me the absolution. Ah, I guess okay. he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine with some open wounds there, that that might hurt a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he... let's speak about the stigma because the stigma is very important. To uh, did they really have the stigma? Of course, he did uh, have the stigma. Uh, the good. Uh, I mean, the news that some people don't know is that Padre Pio received the stigmata in an invisible way the first time in uh, September, around September um, 1918, mm -hmm. beginning of September. Uh, but he had the pains of the stigmata, uh, hands and feet and side, but you could not see anything. The stigmata became visible uh, on September 20th, 1918, when he was in San Giovanni Rotondo praying in the little church and he was kneeling in front of the cross and he was receive, he received the stigmata at that moment with plenty of blood, you know, Oh, but that's when he received the stigmata. Did you ever see the, the stigmata on him? Oh, absolutely. Many times. Wow. I, I saw the stigmata many, because uh, actually everybody could see the stigmata when he was celebrating Mass. Right. That's right. The, the only time he didn't, you know, have the gloves. Um, but um, 
for for us, secretary, we had to see him, you know, answering the letters, asking questions, you know, and you know, it's, uh, it was. Um, I never saw the stigmata of the side, to tell you the truth. But he had the stigma that side, because this Alessio, the other secretary, he was taking care of the stigmata. He, he showed me um, the bandages he was taking from the from the side. He had to medicate to change the bandages three times a day. Uh, I saw the stigmata of the feet because uh, only once or twice <laughs> I could see his feet. He had big socks, you know, covering the stigmata. But the side I, I never saw, but it was there. It was bleeding. Is that um, corresponding to the uh, piercing of Christ's side? Yes. Mm, yeah. Actually, it was pierced, uh, just like Jesus was pierced, you know, the, the, the hands, the feet at the side. And the cut, actually, Alessio told me the cut, because he had the picture of the sti- of, of that stigma. Too bad I didn't get, I didn't keep that uh, picture. Uh, it's uh, like a lance, like a sword, cutting the, the chest, you know, like like a real, a real cut. Where is the stigma of the hands and the feet were more like round and deep, round, but they were ugly, you know. You can quote me on that. They were ugly, they were terrible, you know, something bleeding and terrible. Uh, and some days the stigmata were so visible that you could see through. Actually, in the, the, the hand, if you if he put the hand against the sun, against the light, mm. you actually could see through a little bit oh. because there was a little membrane, just a little membrane between. So this, the the stigma were deep, mm. really, really deep. You know, from what I've read, and <clears throat> it's kind of portrayed in one of the movies that I've seen about St. Padre Pio, it seems that he he was kind of like St. Anthony insofar as St. Anthony of the Desert sometimes was attacked by demons. Um, it, and, and they say that that happened to St. Padre Pio as well, that the uh, devil would come to him and attack him. Did, did, did you ever uh, hear about that or experience that with him? Yeah, it's very true. Yes, I uh, not only I read about it, you know, but I, I, uh, Father Alessio, he was taking care of, of Padre Pio day and night for the stigma, etc. And uh, actually, the chains, and I heard, you know, that Padre Pio was, um, you know, mourning and <laughs> crying and yelling from his room yeah. to call uh, Padre Alessio. Because the devil actually used chain and uh, beat him up really badly, you know. It's, uh, uh, sometimes he would uh, get up in the morning black and blue, you know. <laughs> and uh, unless you would say, "What what happened to you? You have a black eye there." <laughs> and, you would said, see, uh, and you would see that on on Padre Pio, is that right? Oh yes, oh yes. Oh, wow. he, he used to call the devil Barba Blue, Blue Bird, hmm. Blue Blue. Beer, beer, beard, oh. barba blue, blue beard. Why? Why is that? He he came to him with a blue beard. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. He used to. Uh, I know why he used to call a wretch <laughs> in the he, he, writing to his spiritual directors. Mm. He would call the devil a wretch. Mm. But uh, uh, on a daily basis, he would go barba blue, and I don't know the reason why he would barba blue. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll need yeah. to look into that. I, I have not heard of that. Wow. Yeah. Um, so let, let me ask you, you, you mentioned going to confession to him. What was it like yeah. going to confession to St. Padre Pio? Did he really know your sins in advance and tell them to you if you left them out? <laughs> well, that's the problem, Michael. That is not your name, right? That's right. Yeah, Michael. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Michael, that's I guess, it's like if, when I was assigned to San Giovanni Rotondo, I was a young priest at that time. Yeah. Going, you know, when I was a kid going to confession, it was another big deal, you know what I mean? 
But when I was a young priest in assigned to San Giovanni Rotondo, I went to confession there, and I was kind of shaking because um, uh, people were telling me he was saying the sins, he knew, he knows the sins, the sins of people. Mm. So I go to his, I went to his room and and said, Father, I want to make a confession, and he said, Yeah, kneel down. So, I, and you know, he immediately notices that why are you uh, trembling? Why are you uh, shaking? Can me tremble? Because he, he, he was speaking Neapolitan. Can me tremble? Why are you shaking? He said, because I heard that you know the sins of people, and I, I was now unstained, Padre. Mm. So he starts laughing, and he says, that's what people say about me? He said, yeah, you know the sins of people. He said, and the Padre Pio replied, I don't even know my own sins. <laughs> How can I know the sins of the people? <laughs> You know, so I made a confession. It was a beautiful confession. But to tell you the truth, Padre Pio was tough with confessions mm. because when we were hearing confessions, he was on one side of the little church and at least three priests were on the other side, all hearing confessions. We had one or two or nobody. It was like it was so, it was so bad, you know. You see, you see, Padre Pio's line half a mile away, right. you know, waiting for to see Padre Pio. Uh, so I asked Padre Pio. I said, you know, Padre, you know, it's kind of embarrassing, you know. Uh, we have nobody, and everybody comes to you, you know. So why is that? And he says, because they think I am deaf, so they all come to me. So, because he was a humble person, he would not take credit for anything. But the amazing thing about confession was that sometimes he would send people away yelling and screaming before the people made a confession. Hmm. Uh, this gentleman from Milan, I, I think it was Dominic, but I forgot. I think Dominic. Uh, he approached the confessional, the confessional to, to kneel down, and before he starts, Padre Pio says, "You, Dominic, go back to Milan. Apologize to your wife. Stop cheating, and then you come back here. Get out of here." <laughs> Yeah, and wow. he left. But for me, the miracle was that this guy, instead of leaving the church, leaving, <laughs> getting upset, etc., he came back. Yeah. Two weeks later, he came back for confession. Now, if we priests do this stuff, <laughs> we end up in jail. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they can sue us. We, we, we would be in bad shape. But Padre Pio could do it uh, because of his charisma, his, uh, his holiness, you know. And uh, many, many, many times, you know, was, um, he was yelling and screaming at the people. But here is the gift of Padre Pio. He was very lovable with people when there was sorrow, they, they were sorry for their sins. It was very lovable. No matter how big the sins were, as long as you were sorry and you were, you know, promised not to do anymore, he would be a good, good confessor. But he could not tolerate nonsense. So it was... Uh, was then let's speak about the confessions. You know, imagine this man is sick because he was always sick, feeble. Mm -hmm. And yet, get it, gets up at 3.30 at uh, in the morning, praying until 
4.30, celebrating Mass at 5, and after Mass, a tiny cup of coffee, you know the Italian coffee, espresso, mm-hmm. you know, one, yes. one little thing there, no cookies, no, just a tiny a, a drop of coffee. Confessions until lunch, uh, 12.30. And they would hear confessions every day between eight and nine hours. Once he wrote to the spiritual director, he heard the confessions for 18 hours straight day and night, because there was a long line when he was a young priest. So, I mean, how this man, who's not really healthy, can endure this kind of schedule, which is horrifying, which is terrible for any healthy person. You know, I can tell you this much, Michael. When I hear confessions for an hour, I feel exhausted. Mm. I have to take a break. Right. When I hear confess for two hours, you know what? I need a vacation. <laughs> I mean, how can this guy hear for eight, nine hours on a daily basis? You know, it's, uh, but it appears amazing. It, and that's why I, I thought when I was with him there, I said, this guy is, <laughs> it has to be a saint, you know. Uh, I did not wait for the canonization of Padre Pio. I was there, but I didn't need it. I knew he was saint. <laughs> did, did he did he really have a meeting with John Paul II? Uh, when, whenever John Paul was was young. Oh, he met John Paul II at least. One, two. When he was still a priest, I, I remember hearing that he met John, he, he met to, he met the John Paul when he was a priest, and he told him that he, he was going to be pope. He met the John Paul when he was a bishop. He met John Paul when he was cardinal, and he met John Paul when he was pope because John Paul stopped by there. And the, now the good thing about the good thing, the news about John Paul is when when he was bishop, mm-hmm. he stopped uh, San Giovanni Rotondo to go to confession to Padre Pio. Mm-hmm. And when he went to confession, uh, John Paul say, said, uh, uh, Voitila, Voitila says, uh, I need your blessing, Father. Please bless me first. And uh, Padre Pio replied, Your Holiness, please bless me first. And uh, Bishop (laughs) Voitila thought, you must be joking. So he knew that he was going to be the Pope, and he told him that. He he told him when he was Bishop. He told him, Your Holiness, you bless me. Holiness is used for the Pope only. Only, what was is it Sanctita? I think in in Italian. Sua Sua Santita mi benedice prima. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you said he was tough in the confessional. How 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 was he tough as somebody who has personally been to confession with Padre Pio? What 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 exactly was tough about it? Uh. Why he was Padre Pio tough about it? Well, yeah, I, how was he I, tough? Did he give tough penances? or No, when he was noticing some like superficial sorrow or just a routine, some people go to confession just for going to confession, mm-hmm. but, you know, nothing happens. And uh, especially if he noticed that they, people confess their sins, but they were not really sorry. You know, the way they were phrasing or talking, I presume, mm-hmm. they were not really sorry. Then it would be really, really tough. So, I don't know if you could talk but, about... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Father. 
Yes. Uh, he wrote many letters to the spiritual directors about this topic. And as a matter of fact, there are three volumes. You can see something beautiful there. Um, three volumes of letters to the spiritual directors. He wrote to the spiritual directors, I apologize for my lack of charity with people. But sometimes I have to do what I have to do. That's what he says to the spiritual directors. I don't know if, if you can if you can't comment on this, that's fine. But um, what were some of the penances like that he would give out? Oh, the penances was normal, not the normal. Uh, okay. Rosary, okay. Uh, yeah, like like any priest would do, uh, okay. like uh, Rosary, Hail Mary, Our Father. Um, work, works of charity, visiting the church, helping, you know. That's, no, the penances were just like any priest would do. So tell me a little bit about your, your times assisting him at Mass. I, I recall reading that you actually assisted him during the liturgy. Is that correct? Yeah, a couple times, because they were quite few. Uh, we, we, we would take turns assisting the liturgy. Um, he needed uh, every mass. He needed two assistants mm -hmm. uh, because having his feet <laughs> mm -hmm. wounded <laughs> and he could not walk, you know, proper. So he, he had to be held by two left and right, and uh, also the assistants would um, remind him to go on with mass. Because Padre Pio would stay celebrating Mass for hours and hours. If you don't <laughs> tell him, he said, go ahead, <laughs> we have to go home, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, because especially during the consecration and during communion, Padre Pio would, would be like in a trance, in an ecstasy. And he would stay for quite a few minutes, you know, just meditating and sometimes crying. Mm. You know, you could see the tears coming from his eyes. Uh, so it was really moving. Uh, no wonder, you know, people would be waiting for his mass every morning, rain or shine. There would be when we opened the church at uh, four o'clock in the morning. There were people behind the door rushing into the church because the the holiness, you know, it was not <laughs> one of the things that he was not a great preacher, honestly, because he, he he didn't use words in preaching. He used his own person. He was the best preacher I ever experienced the way he lived. Mm. But as far as a speaker, uh, he was not a good speaker. Mm. He was, you know, he was decent. Uh, uh, so, the, and the Mass was, he would sing the Mass almost every day. Mm -hmm. And we begged him, we begged him, Padre, do not sing, you know, don't worry about singing. Oh, it was horrible. You know the voice of Padre Pio was terrible. It was like a, like a frog, you know, a frog. And, you know, he said, uh, should I, sometimes he would say, should I sing the preface as well? You know, the prefatio. He said, no, Father, it's okay. Don't worry, don't worry about singing. Don't just go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he would smile at us and, and, and I kept us singing. <laughs> oh, he, he could not stop it. He kept us singing. You know, <laughs> sometimes he had, uh, you know, a really good sense of humor, you know. You know. God bless him. That, that's one of the questions somebody was asking is, did he did he have a good sense of humor? From what I read, oh, he yeah. did, and, and it seems that you're confirming that. So. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. He would, every day, uh, Padre Pio would spend some time with flyers with, with us, you know. After lunch, uh -huh. il pranzo, the Italian pranzo. And then after lunch, we would spend about half an hour, 
you know, just chatting, talking, cracking jokes, you know, that stuff. And I, I probably was one of us, you know, just cracking jokes and uh, enjoying it. You know, I remember some jokes about uh, this uh, being chaplain in the army. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, he said, yeah, he said, see, uh, he was telling us, you know, see, um, being in the army, is, it's okay, but um, I, I asked my superiors in the army to release me because uh, I have another mission. And we look at him, I said, Padre, you didn't ask to be dismissed. You were discharged because you were sick. <laughs> and Padre Pietro said, who told you that? <laughs> <"Kit, kita la data." laughs> so, uh, and then it's uh, about jokes about uh, heaven, uh, uh, hell, about preachers, about the, I don't remember all of them. But the, actually, there's a book very well written. Uh, one of his secretary, Honorato, Honorato, uh, Padre Pio's anecdotes, Padre Pio's jokes, you know, and they list all the jokes he was most he was saying. But it, it was a, Padre Pio had some kind of, uh, the personality was, when he was doing his ministry, he was solemn. He was like serious, uh, intense, uh, concentrated. But when he was not doing his ministry, he was just, a, he was one of us, you know, cracking jokes and uh, enjoying life. Uh, like he used to, you know, in summertime he would uh, said, oh, said, I need a cold beer now, you know. <laughs> so with the cold beer, so why not, you know. Uh, or ice cream or something, you know. So, would would he drink uh, beer? I'm just curious. Yeah, he, he, every now and then he every would have then. a cold beer, especially summertime. Yeah. Wow! Awesome. It, <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> well, <clears throat> tell me. Um. So what? Did you ever witness anything miraculous? Let me let me phrase it like that. Did you ever witness anything miraculous with Saint Pio? Uh, a couple times, I guess. Uh, miraculous. Uh, oh, okay, let me see. Oh, this lady, young lady, uh, approaches Padre Pio for a, for a blessing uh, because she's expecting a baby. And uh, she goes to Padre Pio, and <laughs> I was there. And uh, she says to Padre Pio, uh, Father, give me a blessing because uh, I'm expecting a baby. And uh, <laughs> and Father, uh, Father Pio said, oh, his name will be Francis. <laughs> and the young lady says, oh, Father, wait a second. <laughs> How do you know he's going, going to be a boy? <laughs> he said, I bless your baby. And his name is going to be Francis. See, at that time, there was no chance that you knew the sex of the baby mm -hmm. ahead of time. There was, there was no technology like that. Mm. So I, I was there and I looked at him. I said, I can't believe this. I didn't say a word. And the young lady was fascinated. It was a boy. He, he, she delivered a boy. So that's a uh, may call miraculous. That's uh, uh, another miracle, I think, was uh, which didn't happen, but for me was a miracle. Mm -hmm. This uh, blind man, he was actually helping us in the friary, in the convent there. Mm -hmm. uh, for minor things, what a blind man can do, you know. My, and he went to Padre Pio I said, you know, Father, I live in the same house here, helping the church, and you cure everybody. Why don't you cure me? I want to see. And Padre Pio said, 
I will let you know tomorrow what I can do. I have to pray about it. So the next day, Padre Pio told the blind man, uh, what was the Nicola? Nicola, I think was Nicola, Nicholas. Nicola, I, ch I checked with God about the miracle. And God, Jesus said that you, me, will help to carry the cross the way we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, no miracle there. Mm -hmm. But what I noticed that this blind man was the happiest man on earth after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. He was so happy to carry the cross of Jesus with his blindness. Wow. And he died blind. But the miracle for me was he was happy about it. Wow. Uh, but all the cure, cures, like during the Mass, sometimes people would scream, uh, Guarito, Guarito, Miracolo, Miracolo. Uh, See, I'm not really sure if uh, we're true or not. However, Padre Pio would turn to us, to the assistant, and say, get him out of the church right now. They have to move those people out of the church because he didn't like this kind of uh, miracolo, guarito, miracolo. Mm -hmm. See, and also Padre Pio did not like pictures mm -hmm. during the Mass. The irony is, nobody got more pictures than Padre Pio. <laughs> How did they? Yeah, if you think about it. But he would, when he, he saw those big paparazzi in the church, you know, he would say the same thing to the assistants. Get them out of the church right now. He didn't like pictures. Wow. Well, that's Padre Pio. He was unique. I think his last mass was videoed. I, I, I saw a little bit of it. Um, <clears throat> it was, uh, I believe actually he died a few hours after that mass. A few hours after what? After the mass that he celebrated. It's on video. The last. Mass oh, no, oh no. You really want to know the story. Yes, please. September 22nd, 19. 68 mm -hmm. at 10 p.m. He goes, he, he tells his secretary, Padre Alessio, he says, Alessio, tomorrow you will celebrate the Mass for me. Mm. And Alessio replied, Father, you are still have been celebrating this Mass for the past 50 years or more. So you're going to celebrate the Mass tomorrow morning at 5 p.m. as usual. And Padre Pio again said it to Padre Alessio, Alessio, listen to me. Tomorrow you will celebrate the Mass for me. Mm. And he went to bed. Padre Pio passed away that night, 2.30 in the morning. Is that beautiful? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I, um, he predicted. He predicted his own death. Wow. And then the anointing, you know, mm -hmm. was anointed like anybody. anybody he wanted the youngest priest, the youngest friar to anoint him, Paolo Cuvino. This, this, he died three years, four, four years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, uh, working you know, with me at that time. He wanted, and the Paolo Covino anointed him, and, and he passed away beautifully. And he was so peaceful. No pain, no nothing. So it, was, it was like sleep. And then in the morning, we had a problem. How to dress Padre Pio? Mm -hmm. Because there were no stigmata when he died. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? 
I've heard about that, yeah. Yeah. The stigmata disappeared about a month, a month and a half before he died. Completely healed. Nothing there. Nothing. Mm -hmm. So we called the bishop. He said, what do we do now? Because people know that Padre Pio has the stigmata. But there is no stigmata. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) it's a problem here. And the bishop said, there is no problem at all. Dress Padre Pio the way he was dressed in his lifetime. Mm -hmm. You know, socks, sandals, gloves, you know, half gloves, and, you know, the chest covered. He said, that's it. Do simple that. If people ask those Padre Pio have the stigmata, then you have to say the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Mm-hmm. You're going to say, no, the stigmata disappeared, which is okay. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, at the funeral, oh, said, I was at the funeral too, believe it or not. I didn't miss a bit of anything. Right. At the funeral, Three days, the, the body was carried through the town. One day carried through the town, another day in the church, another two days in the church. And the crowd was unbelievable. You know, you talk about thousands upon thousands of people. And I heard what people were saying. It, it impressed me. I still remember that. People were saying, when Padre Pio was born, he was crying, and the people were smiling. When Padre Pio died, Padre Pio was smiling, and people were crying. So that's what you know. People were saying, you know, if you saw the video of the funeral, Mm -hmm. you know, you see the helicopters and the police department, you know, all that stuff, because the crowd was unbelievable. Wow. I I can only imagine how many people were there. Tell me about your, your favorite story about Padre Pio. Oh, I have to think about that. Let's see. uh, It's probably the story of the, the letter. I went to him uh, for uh, somebody wrote from Australia, I, I, I think, and uh, she was asking, is my son going to be a doctor or is going to be a priest? So I opened the letter, I read the letters, and said, so how do I answer here now? Most of the letters were requesting prayers and blessings and I, I knew how to do that. The Padre Pio blesses you and prays for you, you know. And Rob stamped the signature, you know, all done. But that letter was unique because she wanted to know exactly yes or no. So I went to Padre Pio. Now, picture this in your mind. I have the letter in my hand. And I say, Padre, this lady wants to and he stops me. He says, he's going to be a doctor. I dropped the letter on the floor. I could not believe it. He didn't even know the First, question. I, I, I didn't finish the question. Yeah. I said, the lady wants to know, and he stopped me. <laughs> he says, he says, he's going to be a doctor. Now, I have the letter in my hands. He never saw the letter. There were too many letters well, for him to see them all, right? <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Well, you know, that's, that's a story in my, in my mind. You know, I was frozen, you know. And then he smiled. When he, when he saw my face, that I was kind of said, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> And he looks at me, so like a little smile there. And he was tired because when I went to him, he was coming from hearing confessions. So probably he was exhausted, 
you know. <laughs> he wasn't even going to let you finish. He just gave you the answer. <laughs> no, he said, no, finish, no, nothing. That's, that's, uh, that's Padre Pio. You see, I never saw, there's some people asking me, see, the, uh, did he have a bilocation? Did he, did he levitate from the floor or what pray? I presume he did, but I never saw uh, Padre Pio elevated from the floor in ecstasy. But I, uh, yeah, I believe that. I, uh, uh, by location, we have uh, t- um, witnesses because they they would tell us Padre Pio was in the court in uh, Pavia, North Italy, a certain date, and uh, and it was at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon. You know, <laughs> I would say, I said, you got to be kidding. Three o'clock in the afternoon, Padre Pio was sitting confessions in the church. Mm. I was there. Mm. But what the person says, here is the picture. That Padre Pio is writing in the court of Pavia, you know, to defend somebody or a witness, whatever was it, you know. So he had by location, definitely. Ecstasy, definitely. Uh, but I didn't... We witness any any of that, but he he, well, he had it. There's there's a part of well in in the movie that I saw about Saint Pio. There's a part there where a guy comes to Saint Pio and tells him about the local bishop and how bad of a guy he is, and starts telling him about the bishop's sins, which I believe were true. But he was speaking yeah. badly about the bishop. And in the movie, Padre Pio smacks him and tells him to get out because he was speaking um, badly and critically about the bishop, even though it may have been true. He smacks him in the face for it. I don't know if that story is true, <clears throat> but do you think that that was consistent with his character? Oh, yes. Did he ever tolerate yes. or, or was he was he respectful to the bishops even when they were wrong? Oh, uh, he was very respectful to the uh, to the bishops and popes, you know, and everybody, because as you know, he was punished by the church, isolated right. for two years because of the stigmata, etc. Uh, to uh, examine the stigmata, but at the end of this isolation, we were all upset, and uh, Padre Pio was was not. Uh, we, uh, we asked him, I said, Father, how you feel? He said, I feel great. You know, I had the time to, uh, I had more time to pray. And my mess was about three hours. Finally, I could say mess for three hours. But he had to say mess, not in the church, not hearing confessions. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was isolated, actually. So, the re- no, he was very respectful of the bishops. The reason why I ask that is because today, I don't know if you're you're really aware, but there's a lot of Catholics out there that are extremely critical. And, and sometimes what they're saying is true, but very critical of the Pope and bishops. And do you think that that would have been something that Padre Pio would have approved of? Or do you think that he, he would have been against that? He would be against anybody who would criticize the church, in, uh, including the hierarchy, uh, mm. bishops, popes, and etc., it would be irate. Mm. He will not tolerate that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. because it's the Franciscans. You know, it's not just Padre Pio. We have obedience to the church. Yeah. The church is always right, and uh, if the church is wrong, they have to deal with it. But as far as ob- obeying the church. Mm-hmm. And uh, laws, uh, regulations, you know, we have to obey that. Mm. And Padre Pio was the most obedient person to bishops and popes and everybody. What do you think he would have thought of, of Pope Francis if he were alive today? I know we're just kind of speculating here, but based on his character, what, what do you think he would have thought of him? Uh, my gut feeling about it, he would love a bishop, uh, a bishop. <laughs> Uh, Pope Francis, he would, because uh, Pope Francis has a Franciscan spirit and also cares very, very much for the poor Mm -hmm. and marginalized. And Padre Pio had the same spirit, 
cast sollievo della sofferenza, the hospital, you know, the, he, take, he took care of the farmers in San Giovanni Rotondo, they were dying left and right, there was no hospital. He said, we have to build a hospital here. So it's the same, um, actually the same policy Pope Francis using to help the homeless and uh, the hungry in Rome, if you, if you heard about it, is he built a shelter at the Vatican, mm. you know, to, for the showers and for the food and for the, for the homeless in, in the city of Rome. Mm. So, you know, he would love, he would love Pope Francis. He would. And what do you think he would have, what, what exactly did he think of the Second Vatican Council? Because, I mean, he, he dies um, <clears throat> a few years after it had concluded. And in fact, I think the yeah. interim, interim mass was, was <laughs> going on at the time. What, what did he think of Vatican II? <clears throat> you, did you study theology, Michael? Uh, yes, yes. In, fa- in fact, I did, Father, yes. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, it has two, two, two phases, two uh, periods. At, at the, be- the very beginning, Padre Pio felt very uncomfortable with Vatican, uh, Second Vatican Council mm-hmm. because he used to celebrate Mass and say prayers in mm-hmm. Latin mm-hmm. for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, you change into vernacular, mm-hmm. the Italian. <laughs> he had a tough time. Right. But he changed it. He, he, he didn't, he obeyed, he obeyed the church. Right. But as far as the theology of the Second Vatican Council, um, the Vatican Church of the, the document of the church, and uh, et cetera, he agreed 100% mm-hmm. because fresh air, new environment, was needed in the church. And John the twenty third did according to Padre Pio and according to the word I think. John the twenty third did the right thing for uh, for the Vatican Second Vatican Council. Yes, he was very proud of the Vatican Council, a brief answer. At, at the beginning he felt uncomfortable to change language language and uh, uh, ritual, mm. but he, 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 he did it. But he adjusted to it. You know, so yes. somebody was asking, did did he ever do um, mass um, versus populum? Uh, mass or what? Uh, uh, sorry, fa- facing the people versus populum. Um, did he ever celebrate mass facing the congregation? Yeah, sure. After the Vatican, mm-hmm. after the, the Vatican Council, you know, mm-hmm. when the Vatican Council said. You must celebrate the mass facing the people. He did immediately. Mm-hmm. Before it was against the wall, you know, facing the wall. Mm-hmm. But when the decree of the council came up, came about, uh, Padre Pio facing was facing the people. Because I remember seeing. So if he, oh, uh, if you see a movie, if you see any movie, Padre Pio celebrating mass not facing the people. Uh, it's not really accurate because after the Vatican Council, Second Vatican Council, Padre Pio celebrated Mass facing the people. Mm-hmm. Before the Vatican Council was against the wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I remember seeing videos. In fact, the last Mass uh, that he celebrated, they have it on video, and and it seems that he was he was facing the congregation for it. So I was, I was just curious about that. Um, so let me ask you another question here. What, how would you say St. Pio influenced your life? I, I imagine he significantly influenced, but maybe tell us a little bit of some of the ways in which he did. Uh, well, in, in, I, I had to make a U-turn uh, because of Padre Pio. I was teaching in the seminary, and... Um, and then I was assigned to uh, San Giovanni Rotondo as a secretary. Then I actually did, I didn't want to go back to teaching. I wanted to do ministry, like, you know, uh, social ministry, like uh, chaplain, hospital, 
presence, you know, that stuff. So I went to Padre Pio. He said, to me, you know, Father, I, I, I really, I, I don't want to go back, uh, back to teaching. And he, he looks at me straight in the eye and says, don't you have the vow of obedience? Mm. <laughs> Case closed, baby. <laughs> That's it. I got the answer. So I went back to teaching. So how did he influence my life? He taught me that uh, obedience is number one. We like it or not. You know, sometimes obedience is not easy. But uh, that's the way it is. So, yes, it did. It did great influence in my life. In that, a um, <clears throat> hundred degree. I, I, I and, can imagine. And also, and also, I think a hundred degrees, a hundred eighty degrees about prayer and optimism. You know, Padre Pio was a prayerful person all the time, mm. working very hard, and any minute he had, they would pray and pray. So, uh, I was not that prayerful, oh, Michael. I, mm. I, I would pray the normal thing, but uh, don't do extra, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, well, with Padre Pio, I learned, the more you pray, the better. As a matter of fact, uh, Prayer, don't worry. You know? <laughs> right. And then the optimist. Padre Pio was very optimistic by nature. He always saw the good side of people. Now, when he met people, the first thing he would notice the good qualities, not the bad ones. So I learned that he was optimist by nature, you know, was very positive. Hmm. Did did you go to him for spiritual direction? No, just for confession. Okay. I never I never went to him for spiritual direction. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> tell me I little... don't think he had he had that time for spiritual direction. <laughs> I, I can I can imagine. <laughs> I yes. can imagine. Um yes. did, did he when whenever you went to confession, I meant to ask him, did he know any of your sins specifically in advance? I remember you said that he said, Oh, well, that's what people say about me. Uh, but did he ever call you out personally and say, You did this? <laughs> uh no, he didn't um uh, he didn't guess any of my sins yeah. because well, the way I confessed was uh, <laughs> I played safe. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Let me go ahead and just go ahead and say it. Yeah. <laughs> Let me do it. I said, I say, you know, in case, in case just I in case. don't remember, <laughs> in case I don't remember. <laughs> and the sins of my past life, and I forgot so something. I feel sorry about it. So, and then you start in you know, all the sins you remember. But so he could, he didn't have a chance to say, "Oh, did you do that?" I said, <laughs> "I'm not sure." You know. <laughs> I, I have, uh, and then go ahead. go ahead. Yes, the other the other thing was, uh, uh, what do I what Padre Pio would tell us today? What it would say to the world today? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm very. Uh, how would you call? Very optimistic about because Padre Pio would say to the world today: Be merciful, be compassionate. Mm. And I say that because Pope Francis. Uh, in nine, 2018, or some, something like that. He declared the year of mercy, mm -hmm. 2018, I think. Mm -hmm. And Padre Pio's body was in St. Peter's Basilica for veneration, mm -hmm. together with Father Leopold, another saint like Padre Pio. And they were saints because they heard confessions. So, Padre Pio, I say to the people, to my good friends, and, and you know, to everybody, Padre Pio is not a saint because he performed miracles. He had the gift of languages, bilocation, uh, prayer, reading hearts. 
you name it. All these things are true, but Padre Pio is a saint because he was humble, poor friar. That's why he's a saint, because he had the confessions. You know, that's, that's his holiness. So he would say to the world, be compassionate, forgive, and merciful. And uh, as a matter of fact, Pope Francis called uh, all the Franciscans uh, in Rome in 2018, I said, as many Franciscans as possible to hear confessions. They were called missionaries of mercy. And from our province here in the United States, I think six or seven went to Rome mm-hmm. to hear confessions, to continue the ministry of Padre Pio. Mm. So the message for him today would be, be compassionate, be merciful, be optimistic. Mm. That's very helpful, very helpful, because there's there's a lot of people right now um, that are struggling spiritually. They're very discouraged, so it's, it's good to hear that. Um, there, there's a couple questions that I'm seeing here from uh, viewers and listeners. One of them is, what did Padre Pio think about the Eastern Orthodox Church? Did he ever say anything about the Eastern Orthodox? Oh. Uh... I'm not aware of that, Michael. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm not aware of that. I haven't seen a whole. I don't lot know if I, I don't. I don't know if he said anything about it, uh, but uh, I'm not aware of it. Yeah, another person is. Um, what did did he have any thoughts on um, Marcel Lefebvre? In fact, there was a story once that he, that he met him. Um, did you hear anything about that? Uh, about what? Say, say it again. Marcel Lefebvre. Uh, from the Society of Saint Pius oh, the 10th. there's a story that he uh, met yeah, him. yeah, yeah. I, I, I heard when I was in the United States, but I, uh, when I was in San Giovanni Rotonda, I never heard anything about it. Yeah, there's there's just different I, stories I going on around it, and it seems that Lefebvre um, came out and said that the story that was circulating about their meeting wasn't true, and that. They did have a meeting, mm. and it was just a very pleasant conversation. Um, yeah, yeah. No, again, you know, I heard the, the, the same story here in this in the states, but yeah, right. not there, not in San Giovanni Rotondo. Um, <clears throat> now, there's another one here. Um, can Father speak to Saint Padre Pio's call to religious life and why he pursued the Capuchins? Uh, can you ask him uh, the same for himself? So, why did you pursue the Capuchins? Okay. Why why did Padre Pio become a Capuchin? Yes. Okay. Because there was a lay brother, a brother in his own town. It's called the Fran Nicola, mm-hmm. brother Nicholas. He was this lay brother was begging at that time, begging door to door to feed the friars, the rest of the community. And he was so impressed by Fran Nicola, brother Nicholas, Mm -hmm. that he said to his dad, dad, I want to be like him. And he became Capuchin. Mm. Yeah, they they show that in the movie, but I I didn't know if that was accurate. You you know how they are with some movies. They they take a little bit of, uh, you know... um, Liberality, I guess, is the term I'm looking for. They 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 take a little bit of artistic license and add things here and there that might not necessarily be true. So I didn't. Yeah, know you know, you know, Michael, when you read books about Padre Pio mm-hmm. and when you see movies about Padre Pio, mm-hmm. uh, cut fifty percent off and you get something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good to know. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is. The best source, actually, the best biography of Padre Pio and the best movie of Padre Pio was written by Padre Pio himself. Mm. And those are the letters to the spiritual directors, Mm -hmm. which are in English now as well. The three volumes of the letters of Padre Pio. That's the real stuff there, because... They are the words of Padre Pio, and you can see the the struggle he was going through because he suffered a lot, 
and you can see the, the hard work he was doing, and the faith, and humility, and uh, the joy in suffering. You can see all that so beautifully. So uh, if you have to recommend anything really valuable to to your listeners, the, 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 the letters of Padre Pio mm. would be a good source for everybody. Excellent. And <clears throat> there's another question here. Uh, did Padre Pio have any contact with the popes? Yes. He had the contact with the pious Pope Pius XII because the Pope called him up because Europe was um, at war at that time. Russia, Germany, France, Italy, they were killing each other like mm -hmm. like goats. So, uh, Padre uh, Pius XII called Padre Pio. Mm -hmm. I need your help. Pray for me. Mm -hmm. Pray for Europe. And at that time, Pius XII, 1925 was, yeah, 1926, 25, uh, instituted a feast of Christ the King, which is coming up. Mm -hmm. The feast of Christ the King was instituted there because the Pope had faith. He said, I cannot fix Europe. This, uh, it's a big mess. But Jesus Christ the King can do it. So he instituted the feast of Christ the King. But and, and then Padre Pio started the prayer groups. The group, Padre Pio's prayer group started at that time mm. when the Pope called Padre Pio for prayers. And Padre Pio said, not only me, Holy Father, but the whole world will be praying for you. And they started with uh, maybe two or three uh, groups in San Giovanni Rotondo, prayer groups, in about a month or less, there were hundreds of prayer groups all over the world. Now there are millions, I guess, you know, prayer groups all over the world. But they, they began because the request of the Pope to pray for peace in Europe. And the, re, the qualities, the requirements to be to be member of prayer group, uh, there are no requirements. Good person willing to pray. Mm. Period. You want to pray? Get together and pray. No, no chatting. No business meeting. Mm. No, nothing like that. Just get together for prayer. So. That's the prayer group of Padre Pio. Um, could you give us some advice uh, from Padre Pio about how we could increase in our spiritual life, how we could belong to Christ more uh, with regards to our spiritual life on a daily basis? What Padre Pio would tell me and you and everybody today is to be authentic, you know. Padre Pio was very strong about being who you are, okay? Um, so following Christ in humility and poverty. Those two key words are very important for the world today. What we need, and Padre Pio is a master about that, is humility. He said it to a reporter from uh, from the Italian TV a long time ago. Uh, he said to the reporter, I want to be a friar, a poor friar who prays. The reporter said, millions of people are following you. What do you want to be? <laughs> you got everything already. And Padre Pio answered, I want to be a poor friar who prays. So you have a humility there and poverty. Mm. Padre Pio was actually for the offerings coming to San Giovanni Rotondo, probably 
was the richest man, man on earth, building a hospital, being paid before he finished the building, uh, uh, the, uh, building a church. You know, it's, it's amazing. But Padre Pio never touched money. Mm. So the sense of poverty, see, he is this man who can do anything with the money, but he doesn't touch anything. He doesn't have it. He doesn't have a penny. And when the Vatican wants to give the hospital to the Capuchin friars, Padre Pio, and Padre Pio said, we cannot do that. We have the vow of poverty. We cannot own anything. So, uh, my advice to to your listeners and to those who are really willing to be Christians said, be humble, be poor, and Padre Pio will be very happy. Hmm. There's um, <clears throat> just a couple more questions. Um, were there any prophecies from Padre Pio uh, about today, uh, the, the world today, or the future? I'm not aware of it. Not aware of it, yeah. Um, I'm not saying I have to go through the letters yeah. you wrote to spiritual directors. I never heard when I was in San Giovanni Rotondo, and uh, I'm not aware of there is any. Um, yeah, no, no problem. Um, can you describe Padre Pio's devotion to the rosary? Oh, the roses. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, uh, Padre Pio loved flowers, period. Mm -hmm. You know, because he would uh, be, he would take a break from confessions, take walk into the garden, mm -hmm. and he loved an uh, open space. He loved flowers. Mm -hmm. uh, he loved, for some reasons, you know, the fa favorite uh, uh, flower was the rose. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why, but the was, rose was his favorite flower, and. Uh, People, because Padre Pio loved the roses, uh, Padre Pio started, you know, people started to say, I smell Padre Pio's. Mm. I smell the roses, Padre Pio. But I'm, I'm not really sure if that is something real, because Padre Pio didn't use perfume or anything like that. Mm. But... Um, uh, many good people told me, uh, you know, I, um, I smell roses, I smell Padre Pio. Mm. Uh, and Padre Pio was not, you know, the person was not there. Uh, a couple of times I, I experienced that too, myself. You know, when I was here in the United States, you know, it's like I was in my office and <laughs> there are no flowers there, you know, and all of a sudden, I, I smell roses, mm. you know. And uh, I think because I have a, a first-class relic of Padre Pio oh, in my wow. office, so wow. I guess, uh, yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. I, I can only imagine. I, I was going to ask you if you had. Do, what, what do you have, um, one of his gloves? or? Well, that would uh, be second class, so. Um, okay, no, no, it's... Uh, uh, I I don't think I would go into those sure, details. Sure, no, no but, problem. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. I have I have some stuff about Padre Pio. Sure, yes, sure. I do. Yeah. What What was all, speaking about roses? There, his devotion also to the Rosary of of the Virgin Mary. He was pretty strong and devoted to the Rosary, was he not? The Rosary, mm -hmm. yes, of the, the the Blessed Mother. Uh, I asked him, uh, actually once, because uh, he was abrupt when I asked the question. Mm -hmm. uh, he had always had the rosary in his hand, mm -hmm. praying. And I said, Padre, how many rosaries do you say every day? Mm -hmm. And he, he looks at me. Uh, it was not a smiling face. I said, I forgot to count. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to count, but you know, I didn't pursue it. Uh, I, I I presume that uh, 
he was saying at least, you know, for at least ten rosaries a day, easily, because the rosary beads were always in his hands. Mm, yeah, and he loved the Blessed Mother, the Blessed Mother, especially Our Lady of Grace. That's the Blessed Mother in San Giovanni Rotondo, and then when the Our Lady of Fatima, the statue was brought to San Giovanni Rotondo. Padre Pio was so beautiful. He, he, he knelt in front of the Blessed Mother, he kissed the Blessed Mother, and, uh, and they released a, a dove, you know, flying all over the Blessed Mother. Oh, he, he was so happy. He was so, he was like a, uh, like, like a child, you know. He loved the Blessed Mother. Yeah, that's something that really has stood out from what I've uh, read about Padre Pio. He had a really, really strong devotion to the rosary, and that that comes out in pretty much everything that I've read about him. Father, yeah. thank, thank you so much for your time. This was the most pleasant interview I've had. I, I, I can't begin to tell you how much I am grateful for this opportunity to speak to you. Um, thank you so much for doing this. And, and would you be willing to give us, um, your blessing father? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and have mercy on you. May he turn his countenance to you and give you his peace. And may the Lord bless you and your families in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy spirit. Amen. Amen. Padre Pio, pray for us. Amen. Thank you so much, Father. I, again, okay. I can't tell you how much this um, this means to me, being able to speak to you and hear about uh, my favorite saints. So thank you so much for your time. I know it's valuable. Yeah. Okay. God bless you. Thank you, Father. And everybody, thank y'all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if y'all haven't already. Make sure to check us out, patreon.com forward slash reason and theology if you want to support what we're doing here. Till next time, God bless. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, office, or any kind of property anywhere in the world, you're going to want to call Real Estate for Life, and they're going to connect you with a Catholic agent. Now, that agent will donate a portion of their commission upon sale, and Real Estate for Life will donate 75% of that gift to a pro-life organization at no cost to you. Call Real Estate for Life at 1-877-LIFE-US1 or text them 248-431-1440. If you care about the pro-life cause, call them now.